Jeff Bichel here on the ACC Digital Network with the commissioner of the ACC, John Swafford. And John, we had the voting today come out with uh, predictions for the preseason of Florida State defending national champs, of course, predicted to win the Atlantic and the conference. What's it like having a conference now that gets the respect of having the defending national champs? Well, it's, it's, it's uh, really terrific, I think, Jeff. It, you, know, you look back at last year and uh, uh, with, with, with Florida State winning the national championship, that, that just brings a certain prestige and credibility, not only to Florida State, but the entire ACC. And uh, we, we were fortunate last year. We had, had an excellent year. I don't think we fully appreciated it until probably about the end of January, because if you, if you look back over the year uh, with Clemson, uh, beating uh, Ohio State right. in the Orange Bowl. Uh, you couple that with Florida State's national championship win over Auburn. Uh, then you take a look at 11 uh, bowl teams and 11 teams after the bowls having winning records, the most of any conference since 1932. And then you, you, you go through the month of January and you see the national individual awards one after another practically every one of significance went to an ACC player. So it, it ended up just being a terrific year, and, it, and that's a great thing for our conference and our schools. Absolutely. It was a fantastic 2013 in football. And I know now looking ahead over the next few weeks, one of the big stories I think emerging that the ACC has been involved with, this talk of autonomy for the conferences in a new way. Um, describe how you've been involved in those process, that, that process and what kind of things will grow out of these talks and the vote eventually. Well, it's been it's been a process that's being has been talked about for for literally several years, but particularly the past year or so, and uh, you know it's involved presidents, it's involved uh, faculty representatives, it's involved athletic directors, and uh, and it's involved the commissioners in terms of our representing our membership. That, that's what my role is to do in this this kind of thing. So uh, I've spent a lot of time with my my colleagues at the other. Uh, conferences and particularly the other four uh, major conferences and and uh, you know I think and working with Nathan Hatch Nathan uh, uh, is president of Wake Forest University and he's also chair of the NCAA board and chair of the NCAA steering committee that's uh, working on the restructuring so uh, we're very proud of the job that he is doing and has done in guiding this effort and I think where we're going to end up is uh, with a, a better uh, NCAA one that uh, allows the, uh, the the power five conferences if you will to uh, to have the autonomy that's necessary in order to pass the legislation that we think will benefit our athletes uh, and, and benefit college athletics tremendously and it, it, it's, it's surrounding things like the uh, the grant and aid and enhancing it, uh, getting it to more toward the full cost of attendance because an athletic grant and aid really doesn't cover the full cost of attendance at this point in time, and another a number of other issues that that, that are uh, uh, I think pertinent to to the student athletes' experience. Uh, one thing I, I know you also have talked about this week, which I was really interested in seeing, the ACC asked if it could put helmet cams on, uh, which would have been a great experience for fans at home, and then also the ability for quarterbacks and coaches to talk and like headphones. Talk about uh, what those kinds of what the goal was for the ACC to ask for those, and then the timeline potentially for those to happen. Well, last question. Uh, sure, uh, sure. Answer first. The, the timeline. The uh, the. Uh, NCAA Football Rules Committee will take that up again, uh, those two issues, in February of 2015. Uh, so we'll, we'll hopefully get an affirmative answer at that point in time for next season, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, why did we want to do that? Uh, I, I, th I think for a number of reasons related to, uh, we, we want our league to be on the cutting edge in terms of, uh, of college football or, or any other sport for that matter. Uh, but. And we felt like, in terms of the uh, camera, that that's something that, uh, first of all, can be used to some degree as a teaching device and coaching device. Uh, when you when you have a camera on a on a helmet, and uh, you can show a player what what he should be seeing, as opposed to maybe what he's seeing or not seeing, right. uh, and, and that can have implications in terms of you know how well he 
he plays his position, and, and it can have some implications in terms of, of safety and, and potential injuries as well. It can also have, as you say, it could be really, really interesting for fans, and I, and I think we need to uh, take a look at anything that uh, enhances the fan experience in terms of, of college football. Uh, Miami had uh, Miami's uh, uh, linebacker apparently right. uh, wore one during uh, the spring game right. at Miami this year, and I, I spoke with him, uh, you know, about it because I wanted to see if if it bothered him. Right. If, and he said he didn't even know it was there. Okay. Uh, that he saw it when they handed him his helmet, and that's the last he thought about <laughs> it. He didn't even know it was on there, uh, which is a, which is good. That's, that, a, good that's sign. a real good absolutely. Thing. And uh, so. You know that 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 that's really the uh, the interest uh, interest level there. Makes sense, Commissioner John Swafford. Thank you. Good talking to you again. Good to be You're with watching you the too. ACC Digital Network. Brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. <laughs>